How do you do? For some people, exploring the spiritual world is like a trip to a buffet line where you sample a bit of every philosophy and religion under the sun. One couple became so frustrated with the answers they found that they were ready to give up until their hearts, minds, and lives were unshackled. Left. Who knows? Thousands of mines are buried out there. I'll sweep the road for more. They're not going anywhere. Let's find some shade. Take a break. I'm so tired of cleaning up after these bloody wars. Somebody's got to make Algeria safe again. I'd rather be on the front lines killing FLN rebels. Wouldn't you? Not really. The thought of killing another human being repulses me. Kill or be killed, Danielle. It's the only way you'll survive in this godforsaken world. If there is a god... I've never met one. You? No. But if I do, I'll ask him why I was born and what my purpose in life is. You live, you love, you die. That's all there is. Do you think so? At night, I stare at the stars and I wonder if... That's some god showing us his power and glory? I doubt he'd be interested in us. Why not? Because all we ever do is create new ways to maim and kill each other. I'll be glad when this war ends so we can return to France. Me too. As long as it's not in a body bag. Bringing hope to a troubled world, this is Unshackled, the longest continuously running radio drama in history and produced by Pacific Garden Mission. For nearly 150 years, our Christian Rescue Mission has provided hope to hundreds of thousands who struggle with homelessness. Every day, hundreds of men, women, and children receive hot meals, refreshing showers, and a safe place to spend the night. We minister to physical and spiritual needs and introduce our guests to the one who sticks closer than a brother, which is what this program celebrates. This particular episode of Unshackled on the Road is being recorded at Eden Ridge Missionary Retreat Center in Crab Orchard, Tennessee. Now for broadcast around the earth, we present episode number 3831 and the true story of Danielle and Francoise Dossman, right now on Unshackled. I was dreaming about heaven. It won't be long now. God's waiting for you with open arms. I wasted so many years chasing every religion and philosophy. Until you found the only one that was true. I believe it was he who found us. Yes, he did. And I found you all those years ago. <laughs> Wait. Oui, Francoise. Thank you for helping me. C'est n'est rien. Seriously? I feel slight in the middle of my box recital. I'm so embarrassed. Pourquoi? Box music is very challenging. Not for you. You're the Academy's best guitarist. You make it look so easy. Ah, that's because I practice six to ten hours every day. <laughs> you should have heard me when I was 18, playing for English tourists at the train station. My guitar was out of tune, and I didn't even know it. Thank you again. I packed fromage and food for lunch. Would you like some? Oh, you're an angel. I forgot to bring anything. Did you grow up in Paris? Oui, but Papa grew up in Hungary and met Mama after the war. His family was Jewish and the Nazis sent them to a concentration camp. Somehow, he survived until the French army liberated him. So your family is Jewish? No, Papa never speaks about God. And Mama's Catholic, but doesn't attend church. Et toi? What do you believe? Or are you an atheist? <laughs> I pretend to be. I'm studying all the world's religions, then I'll choose one. I've heard good things about Hinduism, so I'll start in India. I have plans to go there soon. Do you have any plans this Sunday? Just listening to my jazz and blues records. Why? 
my mother and grandmother usually cook a nice meal on Sunday. Would you like to join us? Danielle, please eat more. I've never seen a young man look as skinny as you do. Oh, if I eat anymore, I'll explode. <laughs> Your cooking is très délicieux. Pass me the butter plate. So, Daniel, you were born in Paris? Oui, 1941, right after the Germans invaded. My father was a POW, so it was many years before I met him. And you served in the army? Yes, two years in Algeria. My daughter tells me you are a musician. Oui. What profession are you pursuing besides music? Music is my profession. <laughs> it's what I plan on doing for a living. Yeah, music is a hobby. It's not a real job. It's a real job for many people. How do you expect to support a family playing music and pay the bills and... Let's talk about something else, shall we? Mama, please do something. Let's have dessert outside. Daniel, could you help me carry some chairs? Of course. Let me take that one for you. Clean air will refresh us all. I'll join you after I finish my bread. Papa, you're embarrassing me. No, I'm protecting you from this boy you like. We're just friends. He dresses like a bum. When you visit someone's home, you should wear nice clothes. He shows up wearing sandals with no socks. When I was young, we... It's 1965, Papa. All the young people I know dress casually. It's just... Daniel being Daniel. Please try to be nice to him. Okay. Okay, I will try. Thank you. But only if you promise me... What? ...that you will never marry a musician. Francoise, keep your friend company while I clear the table. Thank you, Mama. And tell Papa to behave himself. I do not like this boy. He's a talented young man. But I don't think you have anything to worry about. No? Why not? He's traveling to India soon on a spiritual pilgrimage. He may be gone a long time. I hope a very long time. I want to hear all about your trip to India. What were the people like? The cities are so crowded. Thousands of people are pressed together with so much hunger and misery. But there's a god for everything, uh, millions of gods. And everyone is trying to gain a god's favor to achieve a better life when reincarnated. I went looking for answers, but uh, returned with more questions. Did anything good happen on that trip? You mean besides sleeping on the ground at train stations? Why? The hostels were packed. It was the only choice I had. How were the ashrams, the schools of yoga? The yogis taught me so much. I learned how to empty my mind and let the energy of the gods flow through me. How? Oh. With every position and pose, I yoked my body and soul to the spiritual world and a Hindu god. The experience was unlike anything I've had before. Then why do you seem so sad? Do I? You haven't smiled since you sat down. What's wrong? I still don't know why I exist and what my role in the universe is. How can I be responsible for knowing what's right or wrong when every holy book I read says their way is the only way? Sometimes I wish I could turn my mind off. It's okay. You've always been a deep thinker. A blessing and a curse. So, what's next? I'll keep searching. That's what existentialists do. What about work? Some friends asked me to join their medieval folk band. There they have some concerts lined up. And I'll keep giving guitar lessons. And what about us? What about us? Do you love me? We oui, I do very much. Maybe it's time we... Mary? Your papa will not be happy. You let me worry about papa. Danielle and Francoise, I now pronounce you husband and wife. May God bless your union and shine his face on you. Thank you, Reverend. Merci, Monsieur. May I ask, do either of you own a Bible? No, neither of us do. Here, please take the one that I used for your wedding. I wrote a verse from Psalm 127 inside the cover. 
Except the Lord builds the house. They labor in vain that build it. Merci. Remember, all the answers you need for life are on these pages. Where should we start? Read John's Gospel first. Now, go, enjoy your new life together. So, what did your father think? Papa is so proud of you, he told everyone at work. Did you know my son-in-law is in a music group called The Minstrels? They've recorded three albums already. Did you know that they are going to be on the TV tonight? He is so happy for you. We all are. Tell him he's my favorite father-in-law. <laughs> I can't wait for you to come home. I have a big surprise. A new guitar? No. Something much better. Better? What could be better than a new guitar? <laughs> We're pregnant! Home. Baby's still awake? It's bedtime was three hours ago. Where have you been? I had to walk home. The bus drivers were still on strike. <laughs> What's for dinner? I don't know. I didn't eat. We need to talk, Daniel. I just got home. I'm tired. You're tired? What about me? I raise our two-year-old all day while you go to yoga in bookstores. I have no friends. I have no life. The only thing I have is a husband who barely talks to me. We talk all the time. About what? All you want to do is talk about your music and your existential search for the meaning of life. But what about my life? I need you to be a husband. I am your husband. I mean a real husband who laughs with me, wants to know about my day and wants to go out with other couples for fun and- I prefer to be alone. I'm dying from loneliness. Don't you understand? Something is missing between us. Being married to you is like being stuck at the bottom of a dark pit, and I don't know how to climb out. I'm sorry. Maybe we could go on a trip and start over? All three of us. We'll go to India and find what's missing in our lives. You already tried that, remember? But this time, we'll do it together. We'll pray to the gods and ask for their help. The answers are out there. We just need to find them. <laughs> What are they saying? They're asking for our help. But if you give money to one, hundreds more will swarm a taxi begging for arms. How can there be so much poverty? Why aren't there gods helping them? Look, there's the temple I told you about just up ahead. The carvings inside are so beautiful. Oliver fell asleep. We should go back to our hotel and pack for our flight home. But there are more temples I want to show you. Does Mother Teresa live in this city? She's in Calcutta, which is even poorer than this one. She left everything behind to serve her God, didn't she? I suppose so. This country has so much history, and yet so many battles. I'm hoping you explore the Hindu faith with me. The people here are lovely, even the poorest ones. But a religion that tries to please a million gods isn't what we're looking for, is it? Maybe if we tried harder, we might... You've already tried, Daniel. You've read all the religious books of Hindus, Buddhas, and even the Quran and the Kabbalah. But you still don't have peace. You've read all of them except the one the minister gave us when we got married. Maybe it's time we tried that one. We'll hear the rest of this story in just a moment. But first, I want to introduce Oliver Dossman, the son of Francoise and Danielle. Welcome. Well, thank you, and it's good to be with you, and I love hearing Mom and Dad's music between all the scenes. Now, both of your parents are very talented musicians. They also play a vital role in supporting your vision for something unique. Tell us about Eden Ridge, where we are now recording this very episode. Sure. Well, Eden Ridge is a retreat center for missionaries and pastors. And we are located in the beautiful mountains of Tennessee. And over 12 years or so, we have hosted over 3,000 missionaries, pastors, and their families. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Now, give me an example of how you help them. Well, when missionaries return to the States on furlough, many of them are exhausted from meeting the needs of those they serve around the world and also from their travels while they're on furlough. And uh, one couple told me uh, just recently that they were ready to quit ministry. 
But after a week of rest and prayer at Eden Ridge, they knew God wanted them to return to the mission field. Well, listeners can learn more about this ministry when they visit EdenRidge.org. Now let's return to the true story of the Dossman family. I've never seen you read a book so fast. In all my searching, I've never read anything this powerful. Jesus is telling his followers that he is the only way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father God except through him. No wonder the wise men left their homes and searched for him when he was born. Jesus must be the Son of God. Let me see. Why are there two testaments? The old part is everything before Jesus, and the new part is about his life and followers. What do these words mean? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. I think it means he's the only one who can save us from our sins. But there are some verses that I don't understand. Like what? Jesus tells a crowd gathered on a hillside, Blessed are the pure in art, for they shall see God. But how can I see God when I know my art isn't pure and I've broken his laws? Maybe it means he blesses those who approach him sincerely. And without pride? If what Jesus is saying is true and we follow him, our lives will never be the same, will they? No, they can't. If he died for our sins, then we must give everything to him. Our time, our talents, our treasures, everything. Where should we start reading? In the book of John. That's where the minister told us to start. We'll take turns. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The neighbors are staring out their windows, wondering why you're burning books. And misets stuck over there. Are you sure you want to burn them all? You've spent hundreds of francs on these New Age books. When the early Jesus followers repented and received Jesus into their lives, they built a fire and burned all their occult books. They saw them for what they were. Lies of the devil and pathways for demons. Then it's better that you destroy them before they fool someone else. I heard there's a Christian bookstore in the Latin Quarter. I'm going there tomorrow to buy books about the real God. To God's family, my friend. <laughs> Merci. I've never had so much joy in my life ever. Uh, you must find a church that preaches the Bible and not false beliefs. I was hoping you could suggest a church for me. There's one that meets close by. During the war, everyone went to church and cried out to God for deliverance. Now only tourists visit the cathedrals. There are not many believers left in Paris. Someone needs to tell our country about Jesus. Why don't you tell them? Me? <laughs> oh, it will take me years to study his life. Not if you go to Bible school. My friend works at one in Geneva, Switzerland. You and your family should go there. But I'm just a musician. Uh, and I'm just a bookseller. God gives us gifts to share with others, to build his kingdom here on earth. But how will I know what God wants me to do with my life? Study his word and listen to his voice. God will show you how to serve him. Daniel, our country must hear the good news that God sent his one and only son to save the world. good that your husband and son were not flying the plane. Why? They fell asleep the moment they got in my car. They're just tired from the trip. First time in Ecuador? Yes. Your country is beautiful. Your accent is French, no? Is that your home? It used to be. 
We spent the last year in Texas at a Spanish language school. Is that a cloud or a mountain up there? That's Cotopaxi, nearly 20,000 feet high, twice as high as Quito City. The air is thin up here, but you'll get used to it. What brings you to my country? We're joining HCJB Radio to produce French radio programs. HCJB is the world's oldest and largest Christian missionary radio station. The radio towers are up ahead. They're huge. Some are 500 feet tall. They broadcast across the Andes, into Africa, Europe, Russia. It's far bigger than I imagined. How long would your work keep you here? I don't know. Until God calls us elsewhere, I suppose. I hope you'll stay a long time. The world needs people like you who tell people about Jesus. That's the entrance just up ahead. I bet I'll wake these two up and tell them. A new adventure has begun. That new adventure takes Francoise and Danielle 25 years into the future. Oliver sent us an email. What does it say? He and his wife just bought a house in Tennessee. He wants us to stay with them on our next furlough. I still can't believe he's married. Uh, he was 13 when we moved here. Now he's 30. And maybe soon we will be grandparents. Maybe. Any other messages? Uh, that radio ministry in West Africa sent us another message. Uh, they're wondering if we've decided. Where? Ivory Coast, the old French colony. I miss being in a community where French is spoken. I love all the people who work here, all the languages and cultures, but I miss parler français. Et toi, monsieur? Uh, oui. Do you think we should go? Uh, it may not be safe. Uh, there's a civil war in the north. All the more reason why we should go. Tell them we are coming as soon as we let the people here know. Their country is their thing. And we can support the Christian radio station there. Besides, what could go wrong? Francoise! Francoise! Wake up! What's going on? Why are you dressed? Grab whatever clothes you can and leave the rest! You're scaring me! What's going on? The French embassy called. The opposition is going door to door, threatening French citizens. We must leave now! But we don't have a car! Uh, some Americans I know are waiting outside in theirs. They'll hide us in their home until it's safe to reach the airport. What about your guitar? Leave it! We have to go! Now! How bad was it? It wasn't. Tell him the truth. I've never been so scared in my life. But God protected us. On the drive to the airport, we hid in the car's back seat so no one would see us. Anyone vaguely associated with France was being persecuted or chased out of the country. Uh, your mother and I are exhausted. I'm grateful you suggested this place to meet so we can rest. We love staying in people's homes, but this time... We needed a quiet place to rest. Yeah, not every missionary has a son who can treat them to a vacation like this. Maybe there's a way to help those who can't afford a place like this. How? Some friends and I want to purchase land in the Tennessee mountains to build a retreat center for missionaries home on leave. A place where they can enjoy God's creation, be refreshed, and listen to his voice. That sounds wonderful, but land and cabins cost money. We'll need at least 100000 to get started. What will you call this place? Eden Ridge. Sounds beautiful. I wish there was a way for your father and me to help. There is. Oh, you and I are as poor as church mice. When we play music in churches in the U.S., France, and Switzerland, we'll share Oliver's vision. We'll sell CDs and donate all the money to Eden Ridge. You think we could sell 10,000 CDs? No, but God can. <laughs> You're moving like an old man. I am an old man. I'm 75, and I'm ready to retire. We'd already be leaving in America if that embassy doctor hadn't rejected your visa. He said my gland was enlarged and needed to be removed, which I have done. You should have gone on without me. And who would have nursed you back to health? I would have managed. 
You can't even tie your shoes without my help. Yeah, we managed to sell 12,000 CDs, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. And now we finally get to see Eden Ridge. What's wrong? We will never return to France, will we? No, but we'll be closer to our petit enfant. That will be nice. I just wish we had found time to return to India for the right reasons. To meet the Christians there and visit the Dunaver ministry Amy Carmichael started. We'll see them one day. In heaven. Yes, we will. I'll start carrying out the bags. Not this time. Let me do it. You can put your shirt back on, Mr. Dossman. I've had a low fever ever since we arrived. I usually bounce back after a long flight. I'll be honest with you. When that doctor removed your thymus gland, he compromised your immune system, which is why your energy is so low. Anything else? I spotted a growth on your back. It needs to be removed as soon as possible. What is it? Well, I need lab tests to confirm it first. Should I be worried? It could be melanoma. I was wondering where you went. Your dad would have been so touched by what you shared. It was a beautiful service. I thought we had more time. We all did. But God had already counted his days and knew your dad needed to go before I did. Why? It would have been hard for him if I had gone first, and he had to live alone. But now he's with Jesus, and he'll never be alone again. I already miss his mind and his music. Me too. You were too young to remember, but your dad and I's first years of marriage had so many challenges. I doubt it would have lasted if God hadn't found us. But he did. And our lives were filled with more blessings than we could ever count. You were the biggest blessing of all. Growing up on the mission field, watching how faithfully you and Dad served God, changed my life forever. Eden Ridge would never have happened if you and Dad hadn't given your lives to Jesus. God always had a plan. All we had to do was follow it. Someone once said, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. Thousands of Christian missionaries have dedicated their lives to telling others the good news that Jesus came to save sinners and restore a broken relationship with their Heavenly Father. How about you? Maybe today is the day you ask Jesus to forgive your sins so he can reveal his plan for your life. If you need help making this crucial decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Pacific Garden Mission desires to meet the physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional needs of each individual. If you are homeless and need help getting back on your feet, come to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois. 60607 or call 312-492-9410 For unshackled related items our email address is unshackled at pgm.org Visit our website to learn more about this ministry unshackled.org This is program number 3831 Heard in the true story of Danielle and Francoise Dossman were Carrie Brewer Lindley McMillan, Gary Burketto, Ben Dawson, and Philip Hyland. Original music, Unshackled, and Danielle Dossman. Sound effects, Samantha Diesel. Audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Scott Kirk. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today or reach out to us on social media. Connecting with you means a great deal to us. You can find us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube at Unshackled PGM. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, 
I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you.